to this week's Fireside Chat with Jesse. I have a special episode today with Rob Boyer, President of First Commonwealth, and Lee Lytle, President and CEO of ELFA. Uh, we're here today to talk about the upcoming um, ELFA annual convention in Austin. Um, but before we get um, before we get started, I just kind of wanted our, my two guests here to kind of just introduce themselves. So um, Lee, we'll we'll start off with you if you don't mind. Sure. Hi, I'm Lee Lytle. Um, I've been in the role of president and CEO of ELFA for about nine months at this point. Um, prior to that, I worked at a company called Plaid that was a, is a fintech infrastructure company as head of North American policy. And prior to that, spent um, over 15 years in the Federal Reserve System uh, in a, a wide variety of roles. Perfect. Happy to be Thank here. You. Thanks for having us, Jesse. Yeah. Rob? I'm Rob Boyer. I'm uh, currently the president of First Commonwealth Equipment Finance, which is a division of First Commonwealth Bank. Um, before that, I was with, uh, with, with Susquehanna Bank and BB&T for a number of years. Um, I've been in the industry, boy, I guess it's about 28 years now. So um, currently the chairman of the ELFA, which, is, which has been a joy. Uh, and hello. Told you I get some part of the introduction wrong, so you know, <laughs> forgot the equipment finance portion of it. Sorry about that. Um, so, so Lee, it's been nine months. Um, you know, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, any thoughts nine months in about this industry? Uh, yeah, I mean, I have a lot of thoughts. Uh, <laughs> we probably don't have enough time, <laughs> well, but um... we don't have time for everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it, I mean, it's been uh, a whirlwind, but in the best sense of the wor word, you know, I'm a person just generally that likes to stay really busy, likes to learn new things, likes to meet new people. Um, and this has given me all of that in spades. Um, I will say the community has been super welcoming, really generous with their time and knowledge. Obviously, I have a lot to learn, but I feel really good about um you know the, the clip the pace at which i'm learning and uh i i owe that a lot you know to rob and uh, the generosity of his time um our board but just broadly um this community is unlike anything else i've seen in my decades in financial services um where it's just really collegial really helpful really really generous and um i've just felt that over and over again so really happy and excited to be part of it um really excited about the future prospects both for the association and the industry at large and uh yeah i just, uh, just uh, use this opportunity to say thank you to all those who have welcomed me uh so openly perfect and as far as like your first because i've seen you at a handful of conferences so far and yeah mm -hmm. you're running around probably trying to just meet as many people <laughs> as possible i'm sure it's overwhelming um, you know, your first conference when you walked in there, um, what were your thoughts? I mean, about like how yeah. just people are in general in equipment finance. I mean, I think either it was uh, luck or Amy or, you know, Lisa on my team knew what they were doing, but my um, my first conference was the Women's Council. And so that was, you know, pretty like nice to step into in, you know, what has traditionally been a male dominated industry um, to to be able to immediately engage with women and positions of power, you know, in the industry that are driving really positive change. And so um, that was, they, they gave me an easy entry. Um, I will say uh, I loved, you know, I have been at quite a few conferences this year, not all of them, um, as I've been trying to also meet a lot of members, you know, at their offices and, and in other places. Um, but I really loved the ener energy of the funding conference. Um, that was really unique and special. And I, you could just feel like the enthusiasm and the en energy and it, the business getting done, right, <laughs> you know, in those moments. Sure. And so that was a, a really exciting one for me. Obviously, we're going to talk about convention. I'm so pumped. I'm worried about my footwear. I'm worried about, you know, the five days of running around. I'm worried about losing my voice before I give my speech. Um, but I'm really, I know how much hard work has gone into this from my team and how much it means to our broader community and the opportunity for us to all get together and share ideas and have some fun together. And so I'm really, really looking forward to that. Perfect. And you mentioned, um, you know, a few people from the ELFA, like um, just the rock star staff all around was just with a handful of them last week in Nashville. 
you know, yeah. another good conference. Um, so what was it like? I mean, I'm sure that was kind of a security blanket coming in, knowing that you had that strong tenure within that yeah. staff. Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, I think I'm really fortunate that Ralph left things in really good shape. Um, and I'm fortunate to have a tenured staff that knows, you know, how to get things done. They've all worked together for a really long time. So they know each other really, really well. I'm trying to learn, you know, their styles, <laughs> you know, what motivates them, sure. their, you know, their personalities and, and also give them a lot of opportunities to grow and evolve, you know, as we think about what the future of the association looks like. So super fortunate. Um, I, I don't, I'm not knock on wood. I don't think we've dropped too many balls in my first year, you know, <laughs> in, in the job. Um, but uh, yeah, that's all due to the team for sure. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing Lee. Um, so Rob, I'm going to pivot over to you if you don't mind. So uh, I'm going to ask a question. So you want to be an ELFA chair? Yeah. Did you yeah. know kind of what you were getting yourself into before saying, yeah, I want to do that. And then it's like, okay, I have a couple of years before I have to do that. Now it's on you. And the good thing is it's almost done, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, we're in the home stretch, but it's really probably the, the busiest time for me uh, as you get from August to uh, through October. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I, I did know what I signed on for. Um, I didn't necessarily know that Ralph was going to retire uh, and, you know, create that whole dynamic for us. But, uh, you know, I, I've been involved in the leadership the association for many years and have watched many chairs and <clears throat> just kind of, you know, knew, knew what I signed up for. And it hasn't been that bad, right? I mean, I've had some travel. I've had to do some presentations at different conferences, um, which I really enjoyed, actually. So I, I think it's been a pretty rewarding process so far. But a lot, a lot of it, it, it's been interesting because we, we've we've got Lee now, and we're we're bringing a new leader in to run to run the uh, the organization. And as she mentioned, it's you know it's been a lot of work for her, her and and me to help her to some extent, just you know become oriented with things, kind of give her the lay of the land, at least from my perspective as a, as a member and and as a member of the board and in the executive committee for a number of years. So. Um, yeah, you know, Jesse, it's really, it's, it's, it's about giving back, right? I mean, um, being a volunteer in this association has been just an amazing thing for my career. It's really helped me develop a lot of relationships that's enabled me to, to run my business better and, uh, and to grow my business and, you know, being able to, to volunteer at this level and, and really kind of help the organization, at least for a year here in, in a leadership role. You know, it, it's been very rewarding for me. So, perfect, and thanks for sharing that. And you know, it's just all the speaking engagements I see you doing. You were generous enough to to help me out uh, in Pennsylvania for the EF Cares event there. So, sure. thank you. So now, I guess anytime I need a panelist or a speaker, I can just <laughs> call up Rob Boyer, and I'm you're locked and loaded. There you go. Right, fully committed now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> This is recorded. We got that. So we got that. <laughs> Lee and Rob, I just saw your promotional video. Um, I think it was last week about the upcoming annual convention. Wanted to spend a few minutes talking about that and what um, and what attendees. I think attendees, like from a headcount perspective, looking phenomenal. Um, yeah. We're kind of and mention that word home stretch of getting people to come to Austin, and we got six weeks. So we got some time still. Um, yeah. <laughs> for those slacker, for those slackers who didn't sign up for the early bird, but um, can we just kind of talk about um, you know the upcoming convention and what uh, attendees um, you know can look forward to? Yeah, sure. so I'm I'll I'll kick it off, and then Rob would love for you to talk about the theme too. Um, so we're super excited. Obviously, it's my first convention, so I don't really know what I'm getting into here, um, but I'm I'm really excited about what the team has put together. Um, the curated tracks and sessions and the speakers that we have. It's, you know, the, our largest annual gathering of equipment finance professionals. And like you mentioned, Jesse, turnout is strong. Like we are seeing numbers we haven't seen at this point, you know, um, before. And so we're so excited to just welcome everybody into the great city of Austin. So. Perfect. So um, from a speaker perspective, what does our lineup look like? Yeah, so we've got a great lineup. Um, you know, uh, Rob, do you want to talk about Peter Zion? Because I know, you, I know, Jesse, yeah, you just I had mean, him you, on here. I and... mean, Jesse, you have, uh, <laughs> right? Uh, but yeah, I've, I've, 
enjoyed watching Peter do these presentations over the years, mostly at the UFA, and, and I've read some of his books, and I follow, uh, you know, his uh, his blog. Uh, interesting guy with a very interesting perspective on the world and, and is a geopoliticist. He, he just knows things that you generally don't hear much about, right? So he, he can reveal a lot about what happens, you know, in other parts of the world. And in a global economy, which which we exist in right now, you know, there's a lot of things that are going to Im impact us here in the U.S. as, as we see things develop abroad. Uh, so you'll get that perspective from him. And I think, you know, as a business leader, it's been helpful just to, to you know, have some view of what the future might look like, right? Because we need to make decisions about what we do, maybe some of the technology that we're going to invest in or not invest in. Um, I, I've, I've gotten a lot out of his presentations to that effect. So. Yeah, and I'm really excited yeah. at the foundation luncheon. We're going to have Oscar Munez, who used to be the, he's a former CEO of United Airlines. He has a really compelling um, narrative about turning around that company, but also just about some personal health challenges he had during that time. And since he left United, he's um, done a bunch of work with emerging like startup companies in that space. And so I think he'll just give really good perspective to us about you know, change and, and industry that, you know, has been around and, and, you know, solid for a really long time and how to navigate that um, and some really good perspective on leadership. Um, additionally, we've got Amy Walter, who's a political analyst and um, the national editor of the Cook Political Report. Uh, obviously, we'll be about a week out before the election. It'll be an interesting time. And, um, you know, I think she can help us kind of cut through the noise uh, and and give us a look at, at what's happening so that we can think about how it might impact, you know, our world. <laughs> and uh, and so I think the timing couldn't be better for her. You know, I should mention, um, you know, the theme is next level of success, you know, for the convention. So it's going to help us think about how our members can tap into new possibilities to take not only their business, but their career and also our entire industry to the next level. And I think this slate of speakers really sets us up to have really engaging conversations at those, you know, cocktail hours and dinners and community service events um, to think about how we support each other and uh, ensuring that this industry remains just as strong, resilient, you know, um, and impactful, uh, you know, as it always has been. Perfect. Thank you, Lee. And then what's um, the closing event on Tuesday? Well, um, you know this, Rob, you, you talk about this. Oh, okay. I, I yeah, you know, the site visit. You, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had the pleasure of uh, heading out to Austin uh, earlier this year to do a site visit of the location and to, uh, you know, look at a couple of places where we might have our closing party. And we visited three uh, I think the place we've chose is going to be a really unique experience. Uh, it's going to be off property, but it's in a pretty cool place. Um, you know, it's, it's outdoors, there'll be live music, but, uh, it'll be a unique setting. I'll just put it that way. I, I guess it's in line with the theme over Austin that keep it weird. Right. So, um, <laughs> I, think, I think it's, I actually think it's going to be a, a great place and, and everyone's going to have a great time there. It's, uh, you'll have, you'll have to, you'll have to see it. When you to believe it, Jesse. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you, uh, yeah, you know, how do I want to say this? Hey, man, uh, you're on a roll. Just keep going. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Love this. yeah no, it's um, yeah. It, it's got like it's got an eclectic environment, um, um, with different spaces and you know different things to do, and obviously cocktails. So I think everyone's going to have a pretty good time. I've been to Austin a handful of times, and every time I've gone downtown, I've never been disappointed. So um, I'm sure. Yeah, that, that's there. one thing I'll, I'll say about I'll say about the location that we've we've chosen this year. I mean, a lot of times we'll have it at a resort property, but this is right in the heart of Austin, and and there's so many things to do. It, you know, it's the live capital music of the world, and uh, and you know, as far as entertaining clients or going out to dinner, there there are just a huge amount of options within walking distance of the hotel. So Rob, if I'm, you know, an ELFA member and I'm on the fence of coming down and attending the annual convention in Austin, um, you know, why, why should I take my time to come down? Well, Jesse, it's, it's really the only event 
of its kind that that's put on in, in our industry. Um, we'll have it, probably around 1,100 or more people attending the event, which is a record for uh, for the association. Um, we have a really interesting year because we're in the midst of an election, uh, and uh, you know there's some uncertainty about the economy right now that that we're also trying to gauge. Uh, so we've we've got a lot of great sessions that that have been put together. I think that are going to provide opportunities for people to learn. Um, it's going to provide opportunities to learn about new technology, about some of the new uh, financing that that we're starting to see occur within the industry. And um, we've got great speakers. So I think, uh, you know, from an entertainment and, and knowledge perspective, there's a lot to gain. Uh, but there's also just a great opportunity for networking, right? We have, again, 1,100 plus people potentially attending this conference that uh, are going to allow opportunities for, for you if you attend to engage with people, to, to talk to people, to learn you know, about their businesses, to, to share ideas. Uh, and, you know, that's that's one of the biggest benefits that I, I really get out of attending these events, just developing the network, uh, having people that I know that I can leverage if I need help with something or, you know, I need to bounce an idea off. That, that's that been enormously helpful for my career, so. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I'll just add, we've my... got a couple. Sorry, we just got a couple. I'm just gonna have we have a couple of new things this year too. Um, so I'm su super excited about, you know, the curated tracks. Um, we put a lot of effort and time into thinking about really, you know, what would attract people and what would really be of high value um, and worth their time to come uh, from an educational perspective. But we're also doing some fun stuff. You'll see the hub and the exhibit hall, which is you know place where just traditionally like you can meet with exhibitors. Um, to discover, you know, latest industry solutions, but we're also going to be doing some live podcasting in there, some rapid te tech talks and just like some fun stuff there. So I think it'll be a really good place to congregate and meet with others in the industry. So I'm excited. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, this is my 19th year. I guess I'm going on my 19th year in equipment finance. I'm, I feel old, but um, I guess my, <laughs> This is my 18th convention because of the COVID year. COVID, where it was virtual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. I think every single convention I've been to, there has been a new business opportunity that has come directly, at least one, but let alone the several, like tens, 20, 30 different connections that you meet for the first time. So I highly recommend yeah. people. I believe from, um, I guess, from a breakout session perspective, what can attendees, um, any highlights there you'd like to share? Absolutely. Like I mentioned, we have, you know, dedicated tracks this, this year, which means if you want to follow an innovation track, you can follow that the whole way through, but there's no need to do that, to stick to it. Um, but I'm, I'm really excited about the variety of content that we have and just how applicable applicable it is to, you know, real world problems that people are tackling every day in this industry. So we've got some fun topics on supply chain and onshoring climate finance, which of course continues to be a driver, um, compensation trends in the industry. Can't have a conference in the year 2024 without talking about AI. So of course we'll be talking about AI, <laughs> um, <laughs> but we're bringing in some new topics as well, you know, investing in underserved communities, um, Talking about Basel III Endgame, now that that seems to be reopened up and, and what that could potentially mean for our industry. And then the emerging role of private equity uh, that we've seen um, in, in recent in recent days. So um, again, we're, we're trying to keep these as relevant and as timely as possible. So they really have true value for the attendees. Great. Thank you. And Rob, do you wanna to touch on the community service project if you don't mind? Or project. Sure, yeah. I, I uh, can remember when we started doing these years back, and, and the, the, the reason was because people that were attending the conference on Sunday, maybe instead of playing golf or, or doing another organized event that was more, you know, physical activity oriented, we wanted to find a way that we could start to give back to the community. Um, so, you know, we have three, we have three uh, different um, options this year, if you want to engage in that. So we have the Jim McGrain bike ride, which uh, which we've basically started uh, to, to really honor Jim McGrain, who was uh, to be a chairman of the LFA, but unfortunately he passed away before that occurred. Uh, we also have another uh, event called Tree Folks, which will allow people to 
plant trees within the city uh, to just restore some green to, to Austin. And finally, there's U.S. hunger, uh, which will basically pack meals for families in need. And, uh, you know, the good thing about doing these events is you really get to work side by side with people that you've probably never met before. So, again, not only are you giving back, but you're having the opportunity to, to enhance your uh, your network of, of people that you, you know. And uh, like I said before, you would uh, use that network to help you in your business or further your career. So it's, it's a beneficial thing to develop. No, and thank you for sharing that. And networking time and smaller groups definitely helps you out on the front side of a conference, especially with 1,100 people. So um, definitely highly encouraged to, uh, to take the time to do that. Um, uh, Rob Lee, really appreciate your time today. Um, look forward to seeing you when this airs in four weeks. <laughs> yeah. So um, thank you again. And, uh, you know, welcome, welcome, Lee. It's great to have you in the industry. And, um, you know, congrats, Rob, on everything. Great. Thank you Thanks, so much, Jesse. Jesse. Appreciate your right. time. Thank you. All right. Take care. Thank you.